Bristol because, well, the producer told us to. He's obsessed with old boats, it turns out. Otis, what have you got? I've got the new one from Samsung. It's the Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G. Came out in January of this year. OK. How much dollar-dollar are we talking? £1,149. OK. An impressive price yes, tag. Yes, quite. I, meanwhile, have the Galaxy S20 Ultra. It only costs £500 if you get a refurb one. And you have to get a refurbed one because Samsung no longer make it after releasing the S20 way back in March last year. So it makes it over 18 months old, which in technological terms makes it as ancient as a ship we're on. As ancient as you. Thanks. I'm looking at your lenses and I'm currently seeing that you've got five, which I also have. I can get up to 512 gig of storage with this phone. As does mine. Oh. And it comes with a micro SD card, so it's oh. expandable. Expandable, mm -hmm. yeah. Ah, I've got a processor that is the Snapdragon 888. I know for a fact yours is only the Snapdragon 865. I've got more power. Right, right, right. Pipe down, because does that actually make a difference? OK. Oh, text! Your first challenge is to find out how powerful your phones are in the real world. I think I've got this one. While on paper, my S21 packs a faster and more modern processor, we're going to find out if that makes any real difference when using it out in the wild. And to do that, we're going to 3D scan a scaled-down model of this glorious boat and see which phone can render it the quickest. Well, I'm glad we're not doing... A full-size model of a boat. It would take ages, wouldn't it? To scan our mini SS Great Britain, we're using the app Scan3D. Oh, there's lots of detail on this boat. Yep. It creates 3D models using lots of 2D photos taken from different angles. When they're all green, yep. Before the processor crunches all that data and produces a 3D model. So it's a good way to see which phone is best at handling multiple tasks. Three, two, one. Rex. Come on, phone! Nah, I think you'll find mine will go a lot quicker. My S21 boasts 12 gig of RAM and comes with Samsung's super speedy and latest UFS 3.1 flash storage. My S20 also has a massive 12 gig of RAM, but it's the older and slower UFS 3.0 storage, which surprisingly makes a difference right from the off. 20% to your 15. The S21 jumps straight into the lead. Come on, S20. Both our phones have optical processors. But mine is the latest and fastest tech of the two. Oh. Yes! <laughs> it leaps up to 45%. That's brilliant. But the S21 pauses, giving my S20 a chance to play catch-up. Oh, no, look, you've jumped up 45. to 45 now, but is it enough? Look at that. <gasps> <gasps> Level up! Yes! I'm done, oh, I'm done, I'm oh, done, I'm oh, done. Oh. Yes! You're, you're still on 85. Yeah. My S21 wins, rendering the model in 1 minute 54 seconds. But how much faster than Georgie's S20? Still waiting. Still waiting. Eventually, at 3 minutes and 12 seconds, my S20 well and truly sits in last place. Although our scanning skills leave a lot to be desired, the results are solid. One of the major reasons people upgrade their handsets is to get access to the latest cameras. We're going to test them in three ways. First up, in low light. So here we are in the dingy bowels of the boat. Indeed. But it's not actually that dark in here, is it? I know, it's because this lot have put lights up. Yep. Can we turn those lights off, please? Ah. Right. Right. Shall we? One of the calling cards for high-end smartphone photography is their ability to take photos with very little light. And my S21 has a dedicated night mode, a wide aperture meaning it can take in more light, and a noise reduction feature where it takes multiple photos to combine them and make a crisper image. Yeah, yeah, Otis. Mine also has night mode with long exposure, increasing light and reducing noise. But which can pick out the detail of this 19th century scran? You've got your pies, you've got your stews, you've got your raspberry jam. Right, lights back up, everyone. Should we take a look? Despite the orange glow from the kitchen light, my S21 has captured a well-lit scene with a natural colour balance. Georgie's S20, on the other hand, hasn't done so well and her photo has a warmer colour cast. However, on both pictures, the details look pretty sharp. You zoom in and see how much detail has been retained. 
Both phones picked out the details of the pots in the background, but the S21 is slightly sharper. Yours definitely has the lead there. You know, if we're talking about sort of reducing noise, mm -hmm. it feels like yours has done a better job of doing yeah. that. Victory to me, yes! Aha! Uh, hold your horses, Otis. Your S21 ain't won anything just yet, because it's time to take some landscape shots. Both our phones sport four cameras on the back, but for this snap, we're going to see how well the main lens can capture detail and produce true-to-life images. I have a 108 megapixel sensor, as do you. Yep. So I thought maybe we could take a shot of this beautiful marina and just see how they behave in real life. That's a good shout, actually, because there's a lot going on and hopefully all of those megapixels will capture it. So let's go. On paper, the cameras have almost identical specs. The only difference being mine can go slightly wider. OK, let's have a look. Both phones have captured the marina well, but the S21 has brighter colours and the foreground looks like it has more detail. So I think the image on mine is being processed yeah. better. OK, but what about close-ups? I've got a dual telephoto lens, haven't I? OK. So I get 10 times optical zoom at 240 millimetres and 70 millimetres gives me three times optical zoom. OK, so I only get four times optical well, zoom. Well, let's, let's have a look at them, shall we? OK, I'm in four. So that's three. Oh, look at that. And then that's ten. Although the phones have a different optical zooms, the resulting colours and crispness of the images is pretty similar. That's my ten. Nice. Yeah. It's an, it's an added option, isn't it? How much you're going to use it, I don't know. So, the photos are similar in terms of clarity. However, the S21 packs that extra punch with the 10 times zoom much closer than the S20. While Georgie's S20 performed well, with better low-light photos, more colourful landscape shots and a better user experience when zooming in, it's my S21 Ultra that takes the photography round, putting it two up. But can my much cheaper S20 Ultra claim a victory later in the show when we test screen quality and film a man juggling ping-pong balls with his mouth? Don't try this at home, kids. This is phenomenal! Well, it looks at the moment that you're getting what you pay for. Yes, but, I mean, we were comparing these two phones side by side, getting down to the nitty-gritty, and I have to say, the S21 was only a tiny little bit better on both those tests. And we've still got the screen test to come, so I would say it's all to play for. Georgie and I have been set the challenge to find out if buying a new top-of-the-range Samsung phone is worth the money. Or saving a few quid and buying the previous flagship model is the way to go. The S21 won the first two rounds where its faster storage helped it outperform the S20 when rendering a 3D model of a boat. Yes! Yes! I'm done, oh. I'm done. And its superior cameras took better snaps in low light and from a distance. But who will claim the all important third test? I've got a text. That you do. For your final challenge, mm -hmm. you are going to compare screen quality. I mean, so we just skip that one because I've won. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I wouldn't be too cocky, Otis. My S20 may be a year older than yours, but it's got very similar display tech, and I've got the perfect place in mind to find out which is best. So, Otis, yes. to really put these phone displays through their paces, I thought we could film something unique, yep. highly dynamic, yeah. entertaining. Right. And I think I found the perfect subject. Oh, thanks, Georgie. No, not you, him. Oh. I brought Otis to Circo Media, a circus inside a church where we're going to record our act in 4K using our professional TV camera and play back the footage on our phones. <laughs> I mean, it's better than a ping-pong bat. The fast movement and colourful backdrop is the perfect subject to push our phone's screens to the limit. And before you get any bright ideas, please, don't try this at home. I, I could never do this in a million years. With the juggling man now done with his uh, juggling, it was time to load the footage onto our phones and see the results. Right, my friend, let's watch the footage back. Yep. I'm going to be enjoying it on my 6.9-inch screen. You all right? What's 0.1 of an inch between friends? Mine might be 6.8 inches, but I've still got an AMOLED screen, which comes with Quad HD Plus resolution. I should expect so too. Right. right, let's actually look at the footage. While both our phones have displays which can refresh up to 120 hertz for buttery visuals, my S21 is able to adapt this amount, depending on your task, to save battery. Keeping up with the motion of the ball really yeah. well. Is there a little bit more detail in, like, maybe his sleeve? It's a bit sharper and a little bit warmer. 
Yes. There's really not a lot in it. There isn't that I think much. maybe your colours are just a little, like, that, that red feels just a little bit richer. Yep. Um, there's maybe a little bit more detail in the sort of shadow of his sleeve. Mm -hmm. So who wins that final point? I hate to say it, but once again, your phone is that step up. I mean, yep. there's not a lot in it. There isn't. You really have to look at them side by side mm. and you have to sort of nitpick the difference, but yours is slightly better. Yes, it is. My S21 has come up top in all three tests, but is all that worth the added cost? So that is the question. With the improvement to the S21 being so slight, is it worth the extra 600 quid? Oh, yes. I mean, I've tested both of those phones and the camera on the S21 Ultra is much faster and more responsive and you've got that very useful long lens. I'd go with that. Okay. I don't know I don't know that that's enough, mm. John. I mean, I had the S20 and I loved it. There isn't a leap enough to the S21 to justify 600 quid's worth of difference. Wow. George? Well, I have to say, I agree with Otis. You know, I don't think it's worth the extra 600 quid for those small changes. But if I had to be really honest, if I had to choose between the two phones, I would kind of want the top of the range brand spanking new S21 Ultra. I'm that shallow. I'd pay that much for a status symbol. <laughs> well, you heard it here first, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen.